All right, welcome back, Inebriites. This is Andy of the Inebriart Podcast. We are back again at the Craft Beer Cellar recording in our little home away from home here on Main Street in Plymouth. Uh, so if you're in Plymouth and you want to grab a, a beer or some uh, locally made wine or I believe they even have like sake and kombucha and I think they even have root beer now, um, stop in and uh, check them out. I believe they're online. You can check them out there. And... Uh, so today's guest, I've kind of been going back and forth with, I feel like, for almost like two years kind of online, trying to like work together and, and hang your art in places, and um, it was funny, I, I we kind of lost touch, mm-hmm. and then I was at the Mal Bar, and uh, Jim had bought a Anthony Bourdain piece after Anthony passed away, right. and I'm like, god damn, that looks familiar. And it was just the style. And right. I, I knew right away. And he's like, and he's like, oh, you know, Robert Green painted that. I'm like, I, I know that guy. So, uh, Robert, is it Robert? Ro- Rob, Rob is Rob? good, okay. yeah. Uh, welcome to the show. Thanks, uh, sir. This will be the uh, kind of disjointed craziness that it always is. Um, so, you're obviously a painter. I am. Um, since you painted Anthony Bourdain. Now, you, a lot of your work tends to focus around celebrities. Do you like some, I know there was a, uh, uh, you have a piece over at uh, Beantown Vape, right? Uh, Biggie? Biggie, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's not... Um, I guess the thing... What I what I always try to do is find some true, raw emotion. And then people that are famous obviously are well-recognized. If you'll notice, sadly, mm-hmm. <laughs> most of my stuff happens soon after someone's death yeah um so they're kind of memorial pieces they are but to be truthful it's more that i i i have to be attached emotionally to my work i have to i I can't do it so if someone was like um hey king kong bundy just passed away and you're like i don't really know who that is it wouldn't be something that well i'll stop you there because i know who king kong bundy is and if I read his story, let's say mm-hmm. I didn't know him, and I read his story, um, and and it ha- had some emotional value to me, if I can connect with him, yeah, I sit with the, I, I look up as much information if I can read about them, if I watch, and I'll listen to their playlist while I work, yeah, okay. I really try to get in, you know, in into their um, how they would feel or how they would. Um, you know, and again, I, I, I so, guess I search for this. People always ask me. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you, I'm not sure the guy's name. I could look it up, but there was a. Oh boy, I wish I could remember. There was an artist, a famous guy, um, who walked. He he left a letter, and then he walked out in the uh, street somewhere, and he found him in a river a couple of days later. So he had okay. he was going to commit suicide. Yeah, uh, a buddy of mine. Um, w- wants me to do the painting and he sent me a bunch of pictures to work off of and they were all smiling and I, you know, I said to him, I said, look, I, there's, there's no truth in that to me. You yeah. know, this guy killed himself mm-hmm. and he had, he suffered with major depression his whole life and if I paint someone, I want to paint them a, gen- a genuine, truthful picture because if you lie, you'll get caught. Yeah. So is that why, because the thing that really struck me about the Anthony Bourdain piece is, you know, I've seen a lot of pictures of your work, um, and it's the only one that I remember seeing. I'm not saying it's the only one, but that's all black and white. You know, I moved back and forth. It's kind of a funny story. I um, used to work in all black and white, and then I had this girlfriend who came in one day and said, why don't you ever work in color? So I said, all right. And that, as soon as I did that, that's when people really started going crazy for my work. Oh, so I was like, whoa. I mean, it really popped. Like I was, uh, you know, when I leave work, I do so much after work. They're always like, oh, what's on today's schedule? I'm like, oh, I'm interviewing a couple artists. And they're like, who? And I'm like this guy, uh, Rob Green. And I'm like, oh, stuff's really cool. And I st- so they're like, oh, do you not have any pictures? So I kind of like hopped on your Facebook page. And uh, I pulled up the picture of uh, the lion. Yeah. And they're like, wow, that's really nice. So it's like, maybe we'll use that as Fish McNutt will uh, use the line. He's not even listening to me. 
that. All right, he's vaguely listening. Well, maybe we'll use that as kind of like the header for this uh, episode. But um, it, it's it's really bright, vivid colors. Yeah. Um, Again, yeah. it's about truth, right? So uh, that in, in that particular painting, I don't really have any emotional connection to it, but I do this thing where I I work with the black and white gray gray tones. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I add some color, but again, I don't want I don't I don't want my pieces to really be fluff. Yeah, you know what I mean. So that whole gray thing has a lot to do with not taking away or not adding emotion by adding color. Yeah, you know, um, it's all, it's really I gotta admit it's about eyes for me. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. If I, if I don't if I can't get good eyes in a picture, yeah. Um, well, that's not fair. If I get good eyes, it's going to be a winner. Yeah. Yeah, because the eyes, even in, you know, reproduction or whatever, um, they they capture what's going on. Mm-hmm. You know, they definitely tell the truth. So, And so how do you pick your subject matter? Because I know you just sent me a picture of uh, Jerry Garcia. And it's not like he passed away yesterday. Right. So. Well, there's an interesting was a, story, too. Or, or did that so, just strike you? No, I, I, um, so again, you, you, I, when I was younger, I traveled with the dead. Okay. Like a lot yeah. of people did, right? Yeah. So I had, I had somewhat of a connection. Um, I think I enjoyed the whole atmosphere and the party situation. I, I play the banjo, so. Oh, okay. You know, I, yep. I love Jerry, but I, I'm not, I wasn't, um, as emotionally attached as a lot of people are, you know, the people who go crazy for Jerry. Oh, sure. But he had such a big following, and again, there's a story. There's a story. There's a real story to tell, you know? Mm-hmm. And and uh, so that one had a lot to do with, I knew people were going to want to see that one. Yeah. But again, the story. Yeah. You gotta, I got to have some kind of emotional connection right so so even if you weren't necessarily into an art uh musician's work if they had an interesting story that kind of caught your attention or, yeah. or appealed well, to you in he, some way. There, jerry was diabetic i too am diabetic oh so you kind of heroin like, yeah. addict i too was heroin oh, addict. Geez, okay. so <laughs> you know um and and then uh there are there are songs by the dead like R- ripple for number one mm-hmm. this is a song that has forever moved me yeah. So, so yeah, I can get right in with that, you know. Yeah. Um, but there are people that I definitely just don't have any, you know. If you're a, f- a famous actor, that's just one of those fluff guys. That, yeah. You know, if I find out you had a background, right? That I can, you know, connect with somehow and have some feeling, then then I'm in. Yeah. Uh, so we talked about like some recent stuff, but how did you? When did you get started in art? Like when did it? Well, I started doing art when I was young. Um, I didn't really have a family situation that would promote mm-hmm. the artwork. But sure. I, I, yeah. I, I was actually—I won't say that. My mother, my mother taught special ed, and I used to make really cool art projects for their classes to help them teach. My father, on the other hand, didn't really, you know, um, pay much attention to it, uh, and. Um, so I I stopped. I've oh, I'm always doing creative stuff, but I didn't really make any kind of living painting or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to acting school. Oh yeah, yeah. I was uh, pursuing that for a while, and then um, did you were you looking to get into movies or like yeah I wanted Broadway to, or uh, yeah more more well, Broadway, but uh, you know if it were drama, not you know not musical musicals. Stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Uh, after well, I was in acting school. I was starting to work, and I got married to Christopher Walken's niece. Shut up, really? Yeah. And that um. Did you meet Christopher Walken? I yeah, we assume. spent a lot of time together. Oh, that's pretty yeah, cool. He's, he's a good dude. Um. However, you know, you would. I, <laughs> I suppose there's a small part of me that hoped that would be a connection for me, right? Right, right. I would yeah. be lying if I said that's not true. But um. Now I, we find out, like every other person, that when you're married, you got to get a job, real job, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I started doing tile work, which was which was um, one one 
a job that I could use my creativity yeah. still. Sure. And I make good money doing it, um, yeah. you know, but... Is not. that still your day job, or...? No. No, okay. It's always there for me if I want to do it. Yeah. But, you know, I'd rather... I can make money painting, um, and painting like anything else. It, you you got to have uh, discipline. You got to get up and paint. It's got to, yeah. You know you what know, I mean? I, I see so many, especially younger artists, who are like... I want to do this as for a living. I want this to be my job. And yeah, be careful like, what you ask for. Well, you, absolutely, <laughs> but then it's like, okay, well, you know, are, are you working at it? Like, how much time do you spend? Oh, well, I'm busy. I mean, like, well, you need to get unbusy, right, and work on it. Yeah. Um, this uh, past podcast guest who's been on twice, a good friend of ours, uh, uh, Daniel Kern, amazing artist, like phenomenal, but he is. Uh, well, first of all, Dan, we love you. He's like the most boring guy because you'd be like, hey, we're all going out for beers. He will have one beer and be like, all right, I got to go. Yeah. And he back. goes right back to the studio. To work, so, yeah. I mean, it it's great because I have several of his pieces. I mean, it's yeah. gorgeous work, but he's got well, that commitment. Sign. Yeah. And, yeah, it means in, in not only a commitment, but he enjoys what he's doing. And mm-hmm. probably to the level, if it's like me, that, I mean, that when I... Again, there are some days that I get up and I, you know, I'd rather do other things, but put my music on, I sit down and when I do, boy, it's hard to drag me away. Yeah. That magic happens and once you kind of get in the zone and yeah. hours just kind of melt away and I, I, yeah. I sometimes 3 o'clock in the morning shows up and yeah. I'm still sitting there. Yeah. So did you find it kind of um I I've actually talked with artists of both types. I, I've met artists who kind of like really stress about getting it exactly right. To, when I draw in stuff, I tend to kind of find it very relaxing, very zen, almost like mm-hmm. my brain kind of shuts down a little bit from all the the background noise. Like, which which camp would you put yourself in? Um, it's very soothing to me. Mm-hmm. It uh, this this is where our conversation will start to get a little crazy. But I um. Those are the get, most fun conversations. Yeah, I get, in, I get in this. I get. Well, this is this is sober painting now. You know, this is different. So we'll discuss the other the okay. other way, but after. But um, I I I hear this. There's this perfect creativity, and when I get there, there's a noise that starts to happen. It's this. It's the hum of the. It's the hum of the earth. It's the sound of ohm. And I figured all this stuff out after, but it's this yeah. hum. I get this feeling in the top of my head, and then it's on. Okay, you yeah, know? Yeah. I know I'm in this perfect creative zone. Um, and it, it's a, it feels good. It's the only high I get these days, you know? Yeah. So, um, I am a believer that although I'm doing the work, this is not going to be a spiritual conversation, but I do believe you know that, what? that I'm only the, the hand of the work. I believe that the, 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 the vibe is there. And, and so, um, when I say I need everything to be perfect, mm-hmm. I step back a thousand times. And I, if one brush stroke can ruin a painting, you know, yeah. or move it in the wrong direction. So there is perfect math. Yeah. But I also believe there are no mistakes because I like to believe I'm being driven. Yeah. More than just myself, right? Mm-hmm. So I'd like to think that there's something bigger than me moving moving my hand right so kind of like you're you're the instrument to get the exactly out. Yeah, yeah yeah well i just like really I, believe I, in vibes man i like believe I, in i've met the, artists that believe that the image is already on the canvas it's their job to let it out i guess is kind of the best way to describe it it could be i i think i more have my eyes Somebody explained it to me once in a way that I found was interesting. So as if there was a, a big mainframe computer unit out there and we're all Wi-Fi, right? Yeah. So all the information about everything is out there floating around. Okay. And if, you believe, if, you, if you're a person of science, you know that there really is no hard matter. We're all just a bunch of electrons, right? Yeah. And then we as different Wi-Fi units are going to pick up on certain things some computers are better at one than another right mm-hmm. i came into this world picking up on emotions and and vibes um i really i really appreciate emotional truth i think we live in a world where people aren't who they are everybody's driven by what they think they should be or what somebody else thinks they should be right yeah. 
so I really appreciate emotional honesty. And since you don't get that much, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I, I'm. I feel fortunate that I'm good at. Basically, you know, I'm. I'm. I get to read it. Again, <laughs> on the other side of that, it can be very depressing because if you always know the truth about everything, or if I think I know the truth, right? Right. The truth isn't always happy. It's very rarely happy. Yeah. You know. And uh, like. I I hear one of the most common phrases you hear, especially if you're down, when people will be like, oh, well, you know, it'll get better. It has to. And you're like, no, it really doesn't. That's like, right. You know, there's no reason. Like, that's almost like a false expert, you know, I, even to the point where you're like, I'll be like, I'm not trying to be like a pity party or what was me. And like, that is an unrealistic. It's, it's true. Ex- expectation. There's no. Yeah. And that brings. That's going to make sure. It, like, I, I, I almost feel like it, it takes some of the. Uh, onus off of you to be like oh well it's just gonna get better i'm like no you have to make it better like you have to be a participant yeah and i you know believe me i've woken up many a day wishing that i was a more simple-minded or simple thinking person that um that as it appears is as it was and yeah. it's you know uh so and i i think um happiness there's a lot of happiness in the world, but I think we, personally we can connect more on our suffering mm-hmm. than we can on our happiness. And so when I do a painting like Bourdain after the day, he, he was a guy I really connected with. I thought he was a very genuine, honest guy. We've lived kind of, you know, parallel lives to an extent. Because mm-hmm. um, he, so, he struggled with addiction too, correct? Yeah, he was, yeah, yeah, he was, yeah. yeah was, um, he said he had a statement. He said, "I couldn't wait to be a heroin addict." Yeah, you know, and uh, th- I can relate to that too. Uh, another thing that was said about him is he was a loner that couldn't stand to be alone, and there's another thing that I can relate to. Yeah. You know? Um, but so then you know, people want to. Why? Why would you? Why is your persona? Why would you pick his? This contemplation of suicide picture. Why is that the one, right? Right. But when people go and look at it, people don't go say, "Oh my God, that's hard." You know, yeah. they're able to connect with that because that's truth. Right. Right. Sure, he smiled a lot. I'm sure yeah. he, he made a lot of money, you know, and traveled the world. So we had smiling times. But what can we, what can we collectively discuss? That we are all in tune with is the suffering part right. of it, right? Well, it's like. I don't know what makes you happy, yeah. but I sure as shit can tell you what what yeah, makes you sad. Exactly. Some people like reality television. I don't. Right. Some people like to read books. I kind of struggle with reading, so it's it's not w- what I love to do. But you know, death makes us all sad, and, and mm-hmm. you know, so we all. I agree. Like we all. Can, it also has a, the ability to move you from one emotion to another. So, so I would like to think that when people see. A picture of someone in distress or upset that they'll say, you know what, I relate to that. But then maybe move to a place where um, I don't want. I'm not out to make people miserable. I'm right, not, I'm not yeah. to make people down. I want them to think and then and then maybe get a good feeling out yeah. of that. You know. Well, I mean, I was talking to Jim and Heather just the other day, and they said how many people like talk about that painting and yeah. take selfies with it, and yeah. so it, it's definitely. It's definitely getting well. That's where attention. it's at for yeah. me. You know, that's this um, the painting thing for me is my going back to that whole truth thing. Is I don't have a lot of friends because I don't have a lot of people that like to tell the truth. People that are constantly lying bore me. Yeah, it's tedious. Mm-hmm. So, my one of the ways that I get to connect with society is through my work. Yeah. Um. When a piece of work goes out and, uh, you know, a thousand people call you and tell you their feelings about it. Well, I just made an honest connection with a thousand people. Mm-hmm. Everybody tells me the truth, even if they say they hate it. Do you get a lot of that? Do you get a lot of people? No. Yeah. I get, um, I don't know if I sent you a picture um, with a girl with the gra- a guy grabbing her from behind, covering her mouth. Um, I think think i've seen that one I'm not so sure. i had a few people tell me that scared them yeah um and then there are other people but that's a that's a emotion that we all share well, it's better yeah. than you know looking at something that doesn't move you at all right right yeah or find another artist yeah i 
um, had a, my, my first wife um, was murdered in a vicious way. Oh, so I, I I have a connection to that, you yeah. know? Um, is it, am, I, am I some kind of sicko because I revisit that kind of thing? No, it's part of my life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so do you find it kind of therapeutic in a way? Or? I do. Yeah. I do. I don't think, I don't like the notion that because I've experienced something, I'm not allowed to have feelings about it. Right. You know, that people, people like to pigeonhole people because they've been through a certain thing, mm -hmm. you know, or his wife died, so let's not talk about death in front of him. Right. And, yeah. and then what does that really do is that cuts the person out now. Right. You know, and you'll find that a lot. I'm, I'm sure when you, when, when you, um, matter of fact, I was talking to my, ex-wife's mother recently and she said that there's not a lot of people that she can talk to because everybody wants it to be fluff right or not talk yeah yeah you know what i mean and she wants to talk about it you know and, and you know it's especially those emotions where like you know sure you miss them they're gone yeah but like what if you have you know, you feel the feelings that you feel. You don't really have control. And, like, I've kind of heard stories of people being mad at people mm -hmm. that have passed. Like, mm -hmm. that's still a valid emotion. Sure. You know, if, especially maybe you had some unresolved, you know, issue between the two of you. Yeah. So, it's not wrong to feel that, but people don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, everybody has the right to do... Um, what they want to do, and I guess that's another fine, nice thing about art is that I, I, I don't have to really. I'm not in charge of what you feel, you right? Know? Yeah, and and you want to keep it to yourself. You want to express it to me. I had a lady. I painted a picture. I don't do political stuff, but that whole, um, you know, this uh, president, the current president. I say anyway. I painted a picture of we Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah. I painted a picture of Donald Trump with the Russian hat on. Did you yep. see that? Uh, I did see that. I yeah. had a lady. I. I was carrying it through Boston, right down by the uh, city hall. Yeah, I had a lady chased after me, wanting to beat me up. She called me an asshole, and I was like, "Lady, look, it's just art. Yeah. It's just art, you know. It's just art, and you're kind of proving my point. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. But anyway, I get to I get to have a connection with people, which is I think is a lot more honest. So I guess I found a way to filter out that which I despise. Yeah, you know. And so would you rather that kind of reaction from the, like that woman that chased you down? I don't it, like that. Is that better than no reaction at all? I, I don't. Okay. Yeah. So let me think about that. I like anyone else. Some people get dressed up. Some people make a lot of money. We all want, we all want interaction. We all want somebody to pat us on the back and tell them, tell them, to tell us they love us, right? Right, right, yeah. So, if I misfire, which happens, I mean, you can't bat a thousand every time, you know? Of course not. So, yeah. sometimes that happens, and um, there are people out there that will be kind and say, but I know, I know as soon as... And, and does it hurt my feelings? No. I, I mean, it might have at one point, but now I realize it's a lot of pressure to to nail it every time you just yeah you can't no well you can hope to and i almost feel like especially artists are probably more critical of their art than anything else if yeah. you're trying to bat a thousand every single time you're gonna have a really rough time of things yeah exactly know? yep and i so i did have that problem i had a lot of people tell me what i just told you which is one of the simpler things in life which is you know if you're gonna if you're going to work at something continuously, you're not always going to have a good day. And I took that in as an adult mm -hmm. and said, yeah, you know, you're right. That's not to say I won't spend 40 hours on a canvas and then throw a hammer at it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, or I, I, I paint have, over uh, them a lot. Yeah. You I, know? I've torn up some drawings or gotten halfway through a drawing and just been like, nope. Sure. And usually I just write on it, you know, I suck or, yeah. you know, this sucks or... Um, but when I remember, I told you before when that when that vibe hits, when that sound starts to happen, and that high comes about, yeah, that, that's kind of what I'm looking for. That's when I know it's right, you know. That's when I know it's on. So I have this little inner inner um, compass that tells me when it's on. So know? to get 
to that point, like I, I know athletes kind of talk about a similar like being in the zone kind of thing. Yeah. And a lot of them will have like rituals and superstitions. Like, do you have a ritual like um, to kind of get set up to paint that kind of helps put you into that state of mind? Well, all right. So now we're going to go off into the other side of it, which is the past ritual used to be involve narcotics. Mm-hmm. And uh, this, this, you know, this is a difficult conversation because not difficult for me, just that the, the answer, you know, it's like one of these answers that's always twisted up artists is, are we better without or, or right? Oh, are we oh, better yeah. without or I mean, isn't it okay that the drugs actually help us? How, how, right? many, how many bands have cleaned up and then put out an album and you've been like, oh, yeah, oh exactly. man. So I have that, I had, I have that feeling. See what? the the um, the emotional connection is always there for me but s- the work gets tedious sometimes yeah you know especially i paint big canvas those things take a while yeah they're huge so um uh heroin can help me get through that yeah you know there's no tedious with heroin right, <laughs> everything yeah. is lovable and cloudy but uh so so when i got sober i Stop painting for a long time because I couldn't have that feeling. I yeah. didn't like the tediousness. Yeah. Um, and I also... How took long a, have you been sober, if you don't mind me asking? Two years now. Okay. It took uh, it. It took a long time before I could go down there and paint again, though. Yeah. Um, I used to be angry because I used to think that the connection... I, I Did you to, think you weren't going to be able to paint again? Yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I think, uh, yeah, and it, it came along, like, like uh, I think a lot of addicts, when they have to let their thing go, they think they're going to be somebody different. In the end, the reality is that although the heroin helped me get through the process, I think it also did a little bit in the way of numbing me, you know? So I am still, I'm still hopeful that, you know, because it takes a while to recover emotionally sure, yeah. and have everything flowing properly. But I'm hopeful that I get, I can be more connected. Yeah. Now, saying that, the reason I became an addict very early on in age, not, um, not necessarily heroin, but I've always abused something, mm-hmm. is because that emotional thing is always there for me, you know, and it's there to the nth degree. So sometimes you don't always want to walk around feeling that, you know, and, and, um, I've asked about that. I say, I've had arguments with people. People say, you live in the moment. Live in the moment. There is no past. There is no future. And I, as an artist, I always used to think it was my job to carry suffering around with me. Yeah. Well, some people will say no. And, and you can visit it when you want to visit it, when you need to work. Mm-hmm. And I say that <clears throat> probably, and I don't want to piss anybody off, so this is my personal opinion, that suffering and art do go hand in hand and... It shows in the work, you know. I, yeah. I do tell people all the time, take a painting, the original, put it on a wall, one that moves you. And then make a poster. Go to Kinko's, copy that, and put the poster next to it. You're not going to. The vibe The vibe was left there in that work. You can't reproduce oh, yeah, it, you know. Yeah. And so if that's a fact, and most people can agree with that, then most people will be able to agree with me that there's some vibe that gets left behind something gets transferred from that person to the work right Mm -hmm. we know this to be true when you go to a museum there's chairs in front of it so you can sit and sit and just take it in right but when you reproduce it there's nothing there right it's just in spencer's right so (laughs) so uh i I think getting off track here a little bit but um that's what we do here yeah I, i i'm i'm hopeful i'm learning i'm learning how to i'm learning how to have all that emotion and live and live with it not not let it get so bad that i gotta bury it you know yeah um i always i said it before i always feel like creative people have you know demons and dark sides and it's to me it's very chicken yeah versus chicken versus you know which came first chicken or the egg kind of Mm -hmm. thing because do you make art as a way to cope with your kind of dark side or you know did the art kind of lead you into the path of that kind of situation right like do you have an opinion on that do you think i honestly believe 
a little bit going along with what I said before about people are connected to certain things. Um, I wouldn't go so far as to say I believe people can talk to the dead, Mm -hmm. but I can say there are people that are much better connected with what's going on around them with that with the with the real honest vibe so i guess i guess true the art that i like and yeah. the artists that i really appreciate are i i don't know if i ever can name one that wasn't somewhat mentally ill yeah addicted and uh, you know everything else. I think it does go hand in hand. I, chicken or egg, I think, I think it's a little bit nature nurture. But I do believe you, you're born with chemistry in your head that there's this, you know a certain kind of brain yeah that works that way. Um, Who are some of your artists that influence you? Well, there's a question that it's not. I'm not a. I'm not a guy. I can't tell you what date it is. Mm-hmm. Can't tell you what year anything happened. Yeah. And when I see art, I don't write somebody's name down. Oh, so it's more. You I know. just stop and appreciate the, the, tr- if there's truth in that work, mm-hmm. and it moves me. Yeah. I can see the difference there. Are, why I apologize through this? Because I want to say there's a lot of artists, especially now with the internet and everything, that just get up and do art. Which there's nothing wrong with that. As a matter of fact, I say do it. Yeah. At the same time, I'm when I see those when I when I see that kind of work, um, I I don't see the truth in it. Yeah. You know, it's very important to me. Mm-hmm. The, 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 uh, the, the, I think that really bottom line, black and white, what makes or breaks it is the truth. Yeah. You can't. I don't think you can lie. You can try. And that's why, you know, when that guy asked me, he sent me the the, the um, smiling picture of the guy. I sent him back a more realistic one. I said, look, this is, this is where it was at. Yeah. You know? Um, I just don't want to fake anything. Yeah. You know? But I'll tell you. I Tile work. So I, I, um, I cared about my job. I did a good job. I rose to the top of that industry i i always um was very meticulous but i was also creative which mm-hmm. is helpful right but i have a cousin who started working with me young he he used to help me out and then um i went to see him i don't know a year ago or something and here i am still hacking away at tile you know one one job at a time and he's making a million dollars and he's got 20 guys working for him he's a house builder right yeah and I said to him, I said, man, what am I... He actually goes fishing every day now, right? And right, all these right. guys just said, the guy started what the fuck fishing. am I doing wrong, George? Yeah. What what happened? He says, Rob, you care too much. Yeah. Right? You just care too much. And then I... I so I, I, I ponder that question quite a bit because I wonder, what's, what are you supposed to do in life? Are you, are, should you care? Should you have the um, the pride in your work? Or do you do you go for the, the, the big money, you know? It's a question I guess every artist has to ask. and it's one of those, it's... But if you go for the money, you got to stop caring. Yeah, uh, to a certain extent. It's almost, to me, it's almost what... I'll give you the perfect example. So um, I was playing a board game with a friend one time, and he was kind of a sore winner. And I'm like, well, I wasn't really playing to win. He's like, what do you mean? How can you not play to win? I'm like, I was (laughs) playing to hang out with a friend. Yeah. And play a board game and have fun, which I did, so I kind of won. Yeah. And so it's like, you care about the, and I'm, you know, please in- interject if I'm, I'm assuming too much, but you uh, you care about the job and its look and where your cousin may care, you know, he's helping people provide for their families by giving them jobs and, you know, right. so it's almost like what part yeah, right, are you right. going to care about? Right. Yeah. You know? Right, so that also could very well. The truth of that could be that uh, I'm a egomaniac. It could be, yeah. the, you know, that I'm. Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I'm sure you know somebody somewhere along the lines taught me to. Um, 
I guess it was my father who always taught me just be the best you can at whatever. So I'm sure there's some something else in there. Mm-hmm. But again, um, shit is shit. When I see shitty work, to me that's not work. It's just not to right. be, you know. And again, so so just like my cousin, I love him just as much as I used to love him before that conversation. Right. And the same thing with any artist. Whatever you do, man, that's your thing. I'm not. I have nothing bad to say about that. Yeah. But don't let's not. Let's not take it to the point where we're having co- mutual conversations about our work because I do my thing for a different reason than you do your thing, right? right yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and 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 again, I, I'm I'm sure I suffer from a good degree of mental illness. <laughs> I don't, I don't uh, if I don't have truth, and um, then because look, if somebody calls me and says, "I want you to paint this," mm-hmm. right? No, it's different than that. But I can't. Uh, I have a very hard time with commissions because I'm I'm not connected. There's no truth, right? And I I just want to run them out to the dumpster every time, you know. Yeah, it's a false people. They they love them, right? Right. There's no complaining about the work, but you don't feel that connection, so you don't I, feel it's perfect. And I don't yeah. have it. They have it. So maybe I'm a little bit selfish. Yeah. You know, here I started this conversation off saying this is my way to connect with people and I'd like people to feel, but at the same time, I got I got a part in this too, you know what sure. I mean? Sure, no, but I mean, that's the truth in it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we were talking earlier about, uh, you were asking kind of like what the rules of, of the podcast were. Yeah. And um, you said you paint on, let's see, uh Places that you may not necessarily have permission to oh, paint right. on. Yeah, uh, well, is yeah. that something you've always done, or I did. I, I did Let's... when I was a kid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and um, and again, so I'm not one of these guys that goes out and writes my name in colorful letters. I would prefer to uh, do a little thing here and there um, that that makes people think, mm-hmm. right? Um, the, whether it's positive or negative or whatever it is, I, I really want to again truth. Yeah, I want. To, I, want I like. To, I like to point out truth in the middle of of this crazy lie we all live in. Yeah, you know, I, I love that feeling too. When I'm because I'm I live in this world too. When I walk around a corner and someone just punches you in the face with the truth, I love that. So that's what I try to do. Um, canvas is expensive. Yeah, uh, I, I like the idea of. Uh, that whole city vibe and and uh you know there's something like a town like this you have a certain kind of people they would never allow me to paint the wall here yeah. even if i asked permission you know well um, they're actually starting to have some murals in well in town, that so. would be great yeah. and you know what i think's gonna happen because i've been at this for a while and i put a post up at one point i never got more negative um comments and i said look i'm not trying to paint a bad picture in a place a building you guys love let's find a nice spot go to any place in the world that's a really great city like this but you gotta add a level of hipness you yeah. know you gotta people have always gone followed where the art was like, always since like the beginning of you, time you don't graffiti plymouth rock it's right you you know but a, a kind of blank brick wall that sure maybe doesn't face directly onto main street or something yeah well, let's put a nice ones. piece yeah. of artwork up yeah, there exactly. you know i'm not trying to paint a dick on the wall you right. know i want to which people do yeah <laughs> right 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 and i take as much offense to that as anybody else I, that that to me is you know it's begging for the wrong kind of attention yeah but um i i i i am noticing now um, I was just in North Carolina and my buddy's a real estate agent there and he said, uh, let's, let's get a mural going. I said, yeah, well, you're, you're a real estate guy and you're one of these guys that, you know, knows everybody in town. Go talk. Let's you know, get it going. I'll fly down here and do it. Yeah. And then he, he never did obviously, but he sent me a, a post the other day that they, they gave another guy, they gave a guy the whole side of a building which would be any artist's dream, you know? Right, right. I'm like, well, but anyway, my point is, even in, it's not rural North Carolina, but it's a smaller city in North Carolina, um, big art pieces like that are really starting to catch on. Right. You know? What's the largest 
you've ever worked? I've never got to do the full side of a building. I've done, you know, one floor, yeah. you know, one story high, but I would like to get one of those lifts yep. and do and one do of, the you know, whole, yeah. yeah. Have have it be a week long or a month long project, you know? Mm-hmm. I, um that's my dream. I would really like to have it. And I uh was fortunate to when I was in Boston I wanted to do a kind of a memorial piece to all the people that have lost their lives to opiate addiction in the, um, you know, like if, let's say we pick five years or whatever. So I went to the city and I put a proposal in and um, he said yes. Oh, cool. Right, now, yeah. they but. all, no, no, <laughs> okay. they, 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 I, they also gave me one of the oldest streets which what I wanted to do was a different color brick on on the street in the so each one for each person that had died right oh, so okay. that when you came around the you know downtown Boston is very old and dark mm-hmm. when you came around this corner you would f- see this street that was just like wow and you know make you think like how many people have had to die to bring this kind of beauty you know but um, so I went through the whole process. I got through. If you ever tried to do a city project, you would know it takes a good solid year before they can. You got to go through every department. Yeah, has to okay it, yeah. right? Did you go through the Department of Bricks? Do you have a brick yeah. painting permit? <laughs> well, you know that's the thing. I'm like, you guys, how is it you gave me the oldest historical street, and you're yeah. going to let me paint on it, and you're going to let it be about addicts right yeah but boston's a cool city like that anyway so the, the story doesn't have a good ending they <laughs> the last thing i'm outside of the city now but they have they want to give me to this lady that's a so-called liaison mm-hmm. well, she is a liaison yeah. i don't want to call it so-called so i go and meet her and i i say we're all ready to go here's my permit yeah the police have to listen to me with this i have the right to do this right. and she says look my job here is to make sure that the businesses jive with the government. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you this is not a great idea. You're going to make some people mad. So I'll give you another street, right? Mm-hmm. Which but which was cool. She gave right, me another right. street. But now I got to go through the whole – you don't understand. Oh, so then to, you had to go back through the whole process you know, all so over. He, yeah. and, and now it's a lost cause, you know? Yeah. And um, the other – the thing I'll tell you about that is that that idea, when I walked down the street and I saw it and, it and it maybe took me a week or whatever, but it hit me in the head. I think I had the idea first. That's why I went to find. But um, when you come to an artist and you say, that's not going to work. Let's move somewhere else and let's get a different idea. It doesn't work like that. Right, right, right. You know yeah, I mean? it's so, like that's where the idea was. Like it doesn't work. And again, yeah. truth, right? Yeah. I, I could have. Sure. That's a nice street. Um, let me just throw down, you know, a picture of a, a, a red coat or you know, right. a George Washington. Yeah, yeah. No, it, that's not. There's no truth in there. So, um, tell you what, I do want to do though. You might have seen this. I think there's one or two guys out there doing it. But um, you know that cellophane that you can. It's about this wide. You oh yeah, wall. you use it to wrap pallets and stuff. Right. Yeah. So I wanna, I wanna go one. This, this, there's a lot of. Um, logistics to this program, but <laughs> okay. what I want to do is I want to find like a city road or a road in a city. Yeah, and I want to r- wrap that plastic. It's four feet, right? I want to wrap it from across the street. I'm going to do this that night okay. across the street from building to building, and then higher and higher and higher and higher, and then paint a- an actual reproduction of that wall this motherfucker is trying to build. Yeah, so that people. What I want them to do is. So Calm down the street and see what the fuck. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah, what yeah. this is. It's not in your sight or in your mind. It's not your backyard, right? So it's it's not your your land that they're exactly. taking with them. So you don't demand. give a fuck, right? But maybe if you saw what th- that piece of shit was going to look like, not only that, what's it going to? It's it kills the vibe, man. It's like there yeah. is something to that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll probably never be able to pull it off, but yeah, you would never get permission to do that. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to ask permission. I wasn't going to ask permission, but I would have to have something high enough for me to work. You know, right. yeah. it, it could go up pretty quick. It's pretty standard. Oh you know, yeah, that's paint you can... the concrete at the bottom and some slats, and you run away. Right. Um, there's so... a thrill to working at night like that, and uh, the the thrill of yeah. You know, 
I'm not going to say how old I am, but I'm old enough to know better than breaking the law. It's yeah. a felony when you get caught. Oh, is it really? Oh, Take yeah. Graffiti is a felony? Felony. Yeah. Um, not to mention, uh, I'm careful about saying this. So you can't really go around posting your work because with social media now, it right. catch you, right? It's, now, it's, it's an yeah. admission of guilt. Admission of guilt. And, and like anybody that does graffiti, you want to put your name on it so you find a symbol that works. But wait, if they catch you on one, they're going to wrap it all up pretty quick. Right, right, <laughs> you know right, right. I mean? Exactly. Yeah. So I got to be careful about that. Um, any, art, any artist that believes in his work should be willing to take a felony at the same time. Um, you know, I, 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 I would prefer that someone comes to me and gives me the legal permission to do these things, you know? Yeah. Well, let me ask you, cause I mean, he's almost a household name. Yeah. Uh, him. Him. What do you, what do you think of Banksy's work? Do you think he is really commercial now? Uh, do you think he, people just like his work because he's kind of gotten no, that commercial? I, I will tell you, he came, he... He, I, I believe his work is genius. It, it's simple to him. I believe it's truth. Yeah. Right. It's simple truth, like we talked about before. That's walk around the corner, see it, and every. Per- we, if you notice, there's all kinds of people in the world. Some some wear red hats, some wear white hoods. Well, <laughs> but but um, they uh, for, for some reason Banksy seems to be. A, it's a it's a broad stroke. Everybody seems to love it, right? Yeah. And that's because it's simple. Mm-hmm. It's truth. Yeah, simple truth. Not trying to say a lot more than what he's saying, right? Um, Do you I, think it it helps with him kind of trying to stay anonymous, where you can't you can't say you're just doing it for the fame? Yeah, I, I man, he's a man after my own heart. Um, if I could have it my way. I would do the same thing. As a matter of fact, it's kind of what I do. I don't have cards. Yeah. I don't have a studio. Mm-hmm. I mean, a gallery. Yep. But I am hopeful that, and, and thank God, I'm very grateful that the way it does work for me is as soon as I make a painting, it's gone sometimes before I'm done with them, right? Yeah. I don't think a lot of people, I'm sure there are people that can say that, but I'm very grateful that that's the way it is for me. So is it okay in my my dream would be just to do my work and for the right people to find it? Because it's also very important to me that I know who bought it, where it's going to be, and that you appreciate it. You know, get, get So would you refuse to sell a piece to someone that you didn't? Sure. Like if someone was like, oh, this yes. is going to be worth a lot of money. I don't do it for the money. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. Again, yeah, that would that would uh, that would be tough for me. Yeah, but I usually get very lucky that people, because the first per- the one let's say I say let's say Facebook right like like wow wow great mm-hmm. great and then there's one guy that says how how much I need it yeah that guy I don't have to question whether he has good intention I know right there I could tell by his you know yeah so and I, so I'm lucky that way um, if I go off into I'd like to you know earn. Um, but there's other ways of getting there besides being commercial or, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. I'd, I, I'd, I'd rather have it that I got there just by, um, being true to my work and that the right people find it. Right. And then, and, and I, you know, I think there's something to be said in less is more. If you, if you can't get something, then you, then there's the, people actually want it. Yeah. If everybody can have it. I don't reproduce my paintings. I, I don't take them and get... You don't do prints or anything no, like that. Yeah. No. I think that's an honor to the person that bought it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the the piece, you know, since we're talking about Banksy, that, that kind of has made the news most recently was yeah. the, the, the piece that at the closing auction shredded itself. Yeah. And it, it... Like, I totally get what he was doing. Yeah. Like... You paid this much. Now it's trash. Yeah. But because it's famous, now it's probably you know the per- this person yeah, probably so could he's, double their money on it right, right. now. And I'm um, see this is where this world gets a little confusing. Like this, the artist is trying to always get away, but they they have the ability now 
now, especially with this, with the, we're all connected. Yeah. You can't get away. You can't escape. They're yeah. going to make you a sucker no matter what. Right, yeah, They're yeah. going to pull you in to their so nonsense. So, like, even he was trying to be anti-commercial, right. it's still commercial. Right. Yeah. So it, it, yeah, it's, more it, so, it, right? Yeah, Can you yeah. imagine how much, the, you know, how he must have felt the next day? Right. Because I thought it was brilliant. It was. I thought it was brilliant, but then right? As, as soon but as I, I felt the same way you as did. As soon as I is, saw it, I'm like, shit, now it's worth twice as much. Right. Well, not only <laughs> that, but now it's all over Facebook yeah. and every person's posting it. So it's like well, we've lost, we, he, he's lost his truth. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I think he, um, you know, I also I see these posts occasionally. I think one recently was tr- somewhat true or um um they they vetted it out that someone had seen him doing a painting and caught him oh really i didn't know yeah. there's this connection now that massive attack that you know the band massive yeah, yeah. Attack. yeah every time they're playing somewhere a painting of his goes up really yeah so they uh, think that he's uh maybe a member yes. connected to them somehow yes. and um there is i didn't really i didn't pursue the story too much because i don't really want it to be true that you know someone's sneaking around taking pictures of him doing his work and then putting it out to the world it's like what you what do you want to rob this guy of the one thing that makes him happy right like he doesn't want to be known everybody else is out there trying to empty your pocket with their work yeah and here's a guy that's not asking for anything yeah just wants to see you think a little bit right and you're gonna steal that from him one of my favorite things um that I'm sure probably brought a smile to his face. He was doing a New York, he was in New York maybe three, four years ago. Mm-hmm. And he had done a bunch of paintings and had someone outside of Central Park selling them for 50 bucks. Mm-hmm. And some woman bought one, but she haggled it down to 30. And I'm like, that that is perfect. That, yeah. you know, that had to make him happy. Yeah. yeah. Well. Yeah, it's a tough situation, so I got to protect myself from that because um, I'm a diehard. I don't want to get pulled into the nonsense. Yeah. So to answer your question, um, I will find a way to connect with people through my art, and um, it would be nice if I could pay my bills, you know, retire maybe, yeah. painting. But um, if that's not the case for me, then I'm going to keep painting. You know? and, and that's how you can tell uh, someone who really loves it. Yeah. Pay me, don't pay me. I'm going to do it either way. <sighs> I'm the worst, man. It's like, yeah, and, it, and this also should, in my book, if there was a rule book, I think, I'm not sure that I can appreciate an artist that really can be good at, assigning monetary value to his work how do you do that because if it's really from your heart there is no value right. the value should be who gets it who gets to enjoy it you know i feel like that's why a lot of agents uh, agents that's why a lot of artists get agents because well like, i was gonna say yeah. i can't because I, I say i had one girlfriend that was less than nice okay <laughs> <laughs> she was real good at i think at, everybody's had a girlfriend that's less than well nice. she was great because mm. you know i I, I, I can remember a story where I was going to walk in and bring a painting and I said, ah, I just need 50 bucks for it. I think she got me 900. Holy shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. It, it's all about that and I can't do it. I'm right. horrible at it. Um, matter of fact, I'd give them away if I had the opportunity, you know? Yeah. But, but, uh, well, my address is <laughs> <laughs> canvas and, yeah. um, all that stuff's expensive. And, and, you know, when I think about, um, I don't have self-esteem issues, but but um, I used to do. I'm a, I'm a, I have a hard time saying no to people, you know. Yeah. I'm not, and I think that's something to do with something I need to work on. Yeah. I, it's not just that I'm a super nice guy. It has to do with being liked and all that stuff. So I had a hard time saying no to people with tile work, uh, which meant that I was working seven days a week. Mm-hmm. I worked on Christmas, Thanksgiving, all of it. I had a family like everybody else, and and. Th- there was the other guy who said, I'm going home. He went home and he never got in trouble for it, you know? Right. Because um, he probably worked a regular day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. But I'm, I, I, make a, I should make a shit ton of money doing that job. So, um, anyway, I, 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 have to, I have to learn. And again, this is why I need to find a person, an in-between guy. 
so that when I'm done painting, I can hand it off to you and I say, find somebody good for this. Yeah. That would have to be a, a waiver for me, you know, like, like shake the person's hand, let them uh, make sure they love it. You know, well, it, it's, um, they, I took part in the, the lobster art installation uh-huh, here, uh-huh. and they were auctioning them off two weeks ago. I happened to be in Vegas for work. Uh huh. And first of all, I never expected it to go as high as it did. And when did I, you do one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. And um, I had a friend. Actually, had a couple friends that were kind of like I was getting these text messages. It's up to this much now. Now it's up to this much. Ooh. Now it's up to this much. And I, and I don't see any of that money, but it's still like holy shit. Someone's gonna pay that. Yeah. And um, so as soon as the auction was over. I'm like, you have to find out who bought it and get me their contact information. I just want to say thank you. Like, yeah. I don't get any of that money, right. but it's the fact that someone appreciated it that much. Yeah. And uh, so I sent them a text from Vegas, and I'm like, listen, you know, you just, you know, obviously you gave my friend your number. I'm like, you know, I just want to say thank you. That's really cool. And, you know, he's like, yeah, man. He's like, we're going to put it outside near the kids' play area. And he's like, you cool. know, I'm going to put it on a base and... He's like, when the weather gets nice and it's installed, he's like, why don't you come by and check it out? Well, so it's know, like, yeah, to me, that, goes, that felt great. It goes know? back to what I was saying, which is that, in fact, you do, you, it's my way of forming a relationship with somebody. You, you, um, you know, hopefully your work is something that, that's going to move somebody and they're going to enjoy. So you guys now share something, you know? Yeah. Even if that's with a perfect stranger, I I feel better if that person. Um, well, you know? A, you know, after that, and after you know, I actually meet him in person. He won't be a perfect stranger anymore. He'll be an acquaintance, maybe that's a friend. Right. You know, and you'll have a friendship that, that will probably be more genuine, and and will you'll interact immediately because you guys already share something, right? You know, something you both love. Right. It's like real. We, it's true. It is truth. You yeah. Know? And like you beat us here today, and uh, Tatum was like, "Oh, you know, the guy stopped by already, but he went across the street to Melbar." And I'm like, oh, "I was checking on his painting." Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, those guys. Those guys. Um, they're again. I just can't speak highly enough for both of them. They. They. They're, they're amazing people. Yeah. They, yeah. they always. They just. They're, yeah, they're really cool people, uh, genuine. I don't get to meet a lot of people like that. That's not to say there's not a lot of people out there like that. It just means that I really appreciate them. They're hard workers. Um, when I went to uh, what's the the, the um, what's the crab one down there? Uh, Blue crab. Blue crab. Yep. It, uh, there's truth in his work. Mm-hmm. There's love on that table. The, absolutely. What's the difference? And he, but he, you could take the same chef, and he does it for him. Right, you know, he wants and, you to be happy. He, yeah, he cares, but, yeah, right? Yeah. So you can take a, um, a two people with the same recipe book to make that thing. One of them, the one that puts love into it, and it's not just the fact that they're skilled at what they do. It's that th- there's there's the vibe is there. Yeah, I know. I don't. It, it, you really start get off the rails when you talk about this vibe thing, but but uh, I don't mean to sound like a hippie or anything weird. I just oh, you followed the dead around. Down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I break it That's down. where you sound oh, like a hippie. Oh, that's a place that I used to do a lot of, I used to paint up a bunch of shirts and sell them there. Oh, yeah. 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 I used to work with an airbrush. I also was a break dancer at a young age, so we used, you know, we used to paint our pants and all that stuff. It's um, nice having someone my age on the show. Ha! <laughs> I feel like, you know, they'll be like, oh, well, you, you got know. a lot of younger people. Yeah, they'll yeah. be like, oh, you know, when I was in elementary school in like 1998 or something or like 2001, I'd be like, just kill me. <laughs> Man, this, I, again, I'm not going to say I mean, my age, but this thing is starting to happen to me where I keep hearing this thing. People say, he's. Let's say the person will say, he's 50, he's an old man. And I'm like, whoa, 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 slow The, the, down, the thing that kills me is, like, you'd be hanging out with someone having a beer, and they were born after, like, I got out of high school. And I'd be like, that's some freeze-dried bullshit right there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah. It is what it is, man. It is what it is. Uh, well, I think we are close to our time here, and we're oh, definitely going to have to. Man, we we're, got a lot. We're going to have to have you back because I feel like we just scratched the surface. <laughs> yeah, sure. like I was looking at my clock, I'd be like, "That can't be right." We're like yeah, close well, to time, right? It's a yeah. good time. It's nice to have a uh, honest 
genuine conversation with somebody. Well, we will 100% have you back because, like I said, I feel like we just scratched the surface of yeah, cool. of, of the, the Rob Green story. Uh, is there somewhere people can go online to see your work? I'm feeling the like best you, thing do to do. Do you have do. a website? I don't. Yeah, that's, that's now. I, I I I have a friend that does um, web design. Yeah. And I said, you know, send me two thousand bucks, and you, you'll make a, a fortune with that, which is probably true. Um, and then when I said there's two thousand bucks, I don't want to do with that with it or do that with it. And the thing is, I'm just not that. I, I, I I'm I'm not that worried about be, being discovered in mass. Right. You know what I mean? I can only paint so much. Right, right, right. So, you know, if I paint one big canvas, let's let's say I did it as a like a push, and I only took one week to do it, I could pay my bills doing that. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, it would be nice. Uh, let's say a famous person gets it, but but I want the, I want them to get it because they love it, not because they're famous. You know right. what I mean? Um, and again, it just it 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 goes back to that. I just want it to be honest yeah you know well they can try and find you robert green oh, on so facebook yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so um yeah uh robert green on facebook i think that if you look up rob m green is maybe what brings it up but um uh, i prefer if people connect with me on uh, messenger or something i'm happy to give you my phone number um i want to know you a little bit i don't want to just sell a painting to some random person you know yeah yeah, reach out. That's how we kind of got to know each other. And there's all yeah. you, you can. Yeah, there's always a way to find me. You know, I mean, yeah. if you, um, maybe someday I'll have a website. But if, if you're in Boston and see some guy sprinting away from some cellophane wrapped around the street, yeah. say hi. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like I said, absolute pleasure. This was a blast. Uh, yeah, me too. I had a good time. Thank you. Awesome. And now uh, we'll have you back again. And uh, thanks to our listeners for listening. And thank you. Okay, thanks for uh, checking out the podcast. And uh, don't forget to check out our other podcasts on the Inebri Art Podcast Network. There's uh, the Bar Talk. There's Old Colony Cast. There's, of course, the Inebri Art Podcast. And our latest, uh, Retro Redoctopus, a kind of nerd uh, genre podcast that you can check out now, all available on our website at inebri-art.com. And uh, pretty much available everywhere that podcasts are available on Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, all those things. And uh, if you don't see it where you're looking, let us know. We'll try to get on to that as well. And you can also email us at inebriart at yahoo.com with your questions, complaints, and suggestions. And uh, also, if you could take the time to rate and review us on iTunes, that would be phenomenal. That helps us get more exposure and bring more of these great podcasts to your ears. And uh, thanks again for listening.